Chapter 5, The Squirrel Oblige. Something strange had happened to the squirrel's brain. Things had gone blank, black. And then, into this black blankness, there came a light so beautiful, so bright, that the squirrel had to turn away. A voice spoke to him. What's that, said the squirrel. The light shone brighter. The voice spoke again. Okay, said the squirrel, you bet. He wasn't sure what exactly he was agreeing to, but it didn't matter. He was just so happy he was floating in a great lake of light, and the voice was singing to him. Oh, it was wonderful. It was the best thing ever. And then a loud noise. The squirrel heard another voice. The voice was counting. The light receded. Breathe, the new voice shouted. The squirrel obliged. He took a deep, shuddering breath, and then another, and another. The squirrel returned. Chapter 6. In the event of a seizure. Well, he's breathing, said Mrs. Thickham. Yes, said Flora, he is. She felt a swell of pride. The squirrel rolled over onto his stomach. He raised his head. His eyes were glazed. For heaven's sake, said Mrs. Thickham, look at him. She chuckled quietly. She shook her head. And then she laughed out loud. She kept laughing. She laughed and laughed and laughed. She laughed so hard that she started to shake. Was she having some kind of fit? Flora tried to remember what terrible things can happen to you, advised in the event of a seizure. It had something to do with moving the tongue out of the way or stabilizing it with a stick or something. Flora had saved the squirrel's life. She didn't see any reason she couldn't save Mrs. Thickham's tongue. The sun sank a little lower into the sky. Mrs. Thickham continued to laugh hysterically, and Flora Bell Buckman started looking around the Thickham's backyard for a stick. Chapter 7. The Soul of a Squirrel The squirrel was a little unsteady on his feet. His brain felt larger and roomier. It was as if several doors in the dark room of his self, doors he hadn't ever known existed, had suddenly been flung wide. Everything was shot through with meaning, purpose, light. However, the squirrel was still well, a squirrel, and he was hungry. Very What? Who can say what astonishments are hidden inside the most mundane beings? Chapter 8. Helpful Information. Flora and Mrs. Thickham noticed at the same time the squirrel, said Flora. The vacuum cleaner, said Mrs. Thickham. Together they stared at the Ulysses 2000X and at the squirrel who was holding it over his head with one paw. That can't be, said Mrs. Thickham. The squirrel shook the vacuum cleaner. That can't be, said Mrs. Thickham. You already said that, said Flora. I'm repeating myself. You're repeating yourself? Maybe I have a brain tumor, said Mrs. Thickham. It was certainly possible that Mrs. Thickham had a brain tumor. Flora knew from reading Terrible Things Can Happen to You that a surprising number of people were walking around with tumors in their brains and didn't even know it. That was the thing about tragedy. It was just sitting there, keeping you company, waiting, and you had absolutely no idea. This was the kind of helpful information you could get from the comics if you paid attention. The other kind of information that you absorb from the regular reading of comics, most particularly from the reading of the illuminated adventures of the amazing Incandesto, was that impossible things happened all the time. For instance, heroes, superheroes were born of ridiculous and unlikely circumstances. Spider bites, chemical spills, planetary dislocation. In the case of Alfred T. Slipper, from accidental submersion in an industrial-sized vat of cleaning solution called 
in Candesto, the cleaning professional's hard-working friend. I don't think you have a brain tumor, said Flora. There might be another explanation. Uh-huh, said Mrs. Thickham. What's the other explanation? Have you ever heard of Incandesto? What? said Mrs. Thickham. Who? said Flora. Incandesto is who? He's a superhero. Right, said Mrs. Thickham. And your point is? Flora raised her right hand. She pointed with a single finger at the squirrel. Surely you're not implying, said Mrs.